Hello everyone, Greg here from Fishbite Films and welcome back to the BNSF Birdwood Subdivision. Well, the tree. Don't worry Bob, they're not as good as yours, but uh, Woodland Scenics tree kits, I'm just trying a few different things. I'd love to get the super trees down here, but they're really hard to get because they're a uh, living thing, or were a living thing. They're really hard to import with all the crap going on. Anyway, these are okay for, you know, for a plastic doodah thing. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about trees. We need to talk about how to keep your model road running smoothly and reliably as far as track is concerned and track cleaning. I did a video on this a few years ago and uh, I thought since these guys here are going to switch out the grain train soon, I get a lot of comments on how smooth my trains run and all that sort of thing. And this doesn't happen by accident. I spend a lot of time uh, track cleaning and checking track. That's what you have to do. That's what real railroads do. And there's two things that I certainly do not do and you should certainly not do if you want your tracks to be reliable and your trains to run smooth. So we'll uh, shut this guy down and we'll get into the two major things that a lot of people still do that shouldn't do uh, to help keep their trains running. And these two things actually will make your uh, trains run less reliably and with a lot more problems. So let's have a look at what they are. Right. So the first thing that you should never ever put anywhere near your track is one of these. That's right, the classic old track rubber. Now we've all used them. You know, I used them since I was a teenager modeling, but back then our tracks were sometimes steel and uh, then brass. And of course we were using DC then, which uh, promotes a lot more dirt to the track. Uh, AC is very good at uh, cleaning and burning some of the dirt off and it keeps tracks cleaner, believe it or not. Uh, DC is terrible because it doesn't uh, break in the cycle and it just keeps attracting dirt, where AC uh, changes from positive to negative all the time. So DCC is really good for that as well. So track rubbers, let's have a look at this first and see what these things are doing to your track. Absolute disaster. And then, you know, track rubbers are pretty obvious. I think if you have a look at one and see how aggressive they are and uh, you'll just see what they do to the track. Not only do they put that crappy uh, dust everywhere, they destroy the surface of your rail and make it very jagged and get scratches and, and that's where dirt can uh, lie in there and changes the whole surface of the rail. It makes it just shocking. Anyway, second thing that you might not think is as bad as what it is, isopropyl alcohol. Now, this says vinegar, but it's uh, actually isopropyl alcohol. This is, I use this for my airbrush and other things. So that's what we'll look at next. So first of all, let's get into track rubbers and why you shouldn't use them. Now, here we have our lovely bit of ply here. You can see it's clean, very clean. So let's say this is my track. My track is technically clean. So we get, a, we get our uh, track rubber, our trusty track rubber, and we start cleaning the track. There we go, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Just imagine this is your turnout. There we go. Do you really want all that shit in your track and on your wheels? Now, I don't know if you can see that, but there are shiny little specks there. They're metal. That's right, they are metal and glue and rubber. All that stuff, none of that stuff is conductive. Get your track rubber and throw it in the frickin' bin. It's doing you more damage, doing your track damage, doing your mine damage than anything else. They're good for sanding timber. That's what they're good for. Get rid of them. Right, have you thrown your track rubber away? Good. Now, here's another damn thing I don't want you to put anywhere near. Your freaking track. Hmm. Pay attention. Right, the old isopropyl alcohol. This is actually in a uh, old vinegar bottle, but uh, trust me, it's isopropyl alcohol. Uh, this is 90%. Uh, this is industrial stuff that I buy for my biodiesel titration. Uh, when I'm uh, making my, f my fuel, I have to test, uh, do tests on it to see how acid the fuel is so I can rectify that and turn it into biodiesel. Now, the reason why I have it in this bottle is I also use isopropyl in my airbrush thinner. Many of you, and I saw a video the other day, use isopropyl alcohol to clean your tracks. Don't do it. Now, it will clean your track. Yes, it will make it clean. We don't want clean track. We want conductive track. Now I take my uh, model railroaders hat off and I'll put on my electrical fitters hat and my electrical mechanics hat and my Cert 4 signal electrician's hat. Yes, I'm dropping some names because 
I have done over 40 years in the electrical industry and three different trades. So I hopefully know a thing or two about it. And the interface between your wheels and your rails is nothing more than a circuit. Forget all the fancy shit that goes with it. The thing that you need between your wheels and your rails is conductivity. It doesn't have to be clean. Helps if it is, but it needs to be conductive. This stuff is not made to make things conductive. It will clean, yes, but isopropyl alcohol has water in it. Have a look on your bottle and see how much it is. Most isopropyl alcohol you buy is 70% alcohol and about 28% water. You want to clean your track with water? Well, if you're using this, you bloody well are. So, also, also it contains a denaturing uh, chemical to stop people from drinking it because it's ethanol. And if they didn't put that in it, uh, people would be drinking this. So, all this stuff, alcohol, water, denaturing spirit, which I don't know what it is, it's some chemical, none of that stuff is made to clean electrical components and make them conduct it. And what are you doing? You're putting it on your track! Don't do it! I'm sick of seeing trains stop and stutter and fart around on videos and people cleaning their track with isopropyl alcohol. It's only going to make things worse. And I used to use it, trendsetters, many years ago. Until I found my trains were running worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So I get this stuff out and I wrap the track with it. It was spotlessly clean. But what would happen is you'd go away, the water would start oxidizing the track. And also the denaturing would start oxidizing the track. So it's a failure. Don't do it. So what do you do? You don't want this. You certainly don't want this freaking thing to clean your track. So what do you do? I have made a video of this before, to talking turnouts and track maintenance. I, mean, I did it many, many years ago. It's one of it's uh, my most popular video, I think, actually. Now, remember, your wheel rail interface is nothing more than an electrical circuit. That's it. Doesn't matter about all your fancy ties and your weathering and all the other stuff that goes on. It's a switch. It's an electrical circuit. Now, so what do you clean it with? You clean it with stuff that's made for electrical circuits. Hmm. Oh, it's frustrating not being able to get out and get a drink. <laughs> no, uh, I'm joking. So, what do you do? You need to make your rails conductive, not clean. Clean is good, conductive is better. So, what do you do? You use something that's made to help with conductivity. Now, I use Inox. This is an Australian made product, and it's similar to your CRC, your RP7s, all that sort of thing. Uh, but the beauty of this is it contains no distillate, no petrochemicals at all, so it's not going to damage any of your plastic sleepers or anything like that. Um, and it's food grade, and it just means you can spray it on food equipment, it's not going to kill you. Um, it has no silicon, that's a big thing. So if you're going looking for a CRC or RP7 or something like that, some of them contain silicon. Make sure they don't contain silicon. If you're in Australia, buy this, because it's an Australian made. Buy some that's made in Australia, for Christ's sake, instead of your stupid Chinese flags that have, have made in Australia, or well, Australia went over Australia today. Oh, I need a cup of tea. If you're in America, I think you can buy this in America, but you know, CRC, all that sort of thing. Now, a bit of history. I've been modeling for, this is my, uh, let me think. This is my 40th year of model railroading. And when I first got into DCC, the, uh, the guy who brought DCC to Australia, uh, sorry, who brought NCE DCC to Australia, a uh, very intelligent, interesting guy, electrical engineer, uh, Gary from, uh, oh God, sorry, Gary. Um, you're in Bankstown. <laughs> It'll come to me as we talk along. You know who you are, Gary. Anyway, I was talking to him about uh, NCE on the phone one day, and we were talking about track, and this is when I was having problems uh, with the isopropyl alcohol. And he said, no, 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 just clean, get some CRC and put it on your track and run it around. So I did, and it made a huge difference. So what this does and what CRC and all these things do, they are not conductive, right? So that's the first thing. This is not conductive. This is actually insulated to have some ridiculous, they're insulated to tens of thousands of volts. So they are not conductive. So what do they do? What do they do? They clean an electrical path. 
so they make the path cleaner to allow the electric current to flow. It doesn't mean they're conductive. Right, now then, you get this, and you get your CRC, or whatever you get, and you squirt a little bit on a rag, and you run it around the track, you'll notice, let me just pick one up, everywhere around the Birdwood sub, there are these little rags covered in black crap. And every now and then, I just get my little thing out, and I go squirt, squirt, like that, just a couple little squirts, and I just run it around the track. And the trains, and I don't wipe it till it's dry, I leave the wet on there, and the trains run it around the track, and they take it everywhere. There are sections of the Birdwood sub trend centres that have never been cleaned. There's a couple of sections of track that I can't get to anymore. Every now and then I'll run a, uh, I've got an old Roco track cleaning car, and I'll put a, um, a wet pad, one of these on, and run it up and down a couple of times. Especially if the rats get in there. I've got a couple of sneaky little rats or mice that come in, and if they pee on the track, the trains just stop. Rat piss is a really good insulator. There you go. So, but apart from that, never ever with this. Never, ever, ever. If you need to clean your tracks because you've got paint on them or something or uh, you, know, you haven't used them in ages or something, for God's sake, don't use a track rubber. Go and get yourself some really, really fine glass paper that uh, you use for polishing paint. Like wet and dry, you can get like uh, three, 4,000 grit carbon paper. It almost looks like carbon paper. And you can spray a little bit of this on that, on your wet and dry, because you should use that that uh, set that uh, emery paper wet, and that will take anything off your track, and then you can go and go over it with this. Ask Parky Seven So there you go. But that's it. Um, a bit of a rant, but I think some of you need it because I see people with locos stalling, and that it just shouldn't happen. If your locos are stalling constantly across turnouts or along the track, do something about it. Or Edit it out of your videos, for God's sake, because it drives me nuts! <sighs> Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. So there you go. Give this a go. This is Inox uh, RP7 CRC. Make sure it has no silicon and no petroleum distillates. I'm sure CRC uh, make a specific one for cleaning electrical stuff. That's the one you use. Tiny little bit. Tiny little bit. And that's all you need. That's all you need. Remember, your wheels and your tracks are part of an electrical circuit. So don't put anything on your tracks that you wouldn't put on an electric circuit. There you go. Forget that they're trains. Forget that they're rails. They're part of an electric circuit. There you go. Anyway, that's it. I thought because some of you are stuck at home, you might need a rant. And uh, if you like it, let me know. There'll be some more. <laughs> I've got plenty of... Ready to come out. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. See you again on the Birdwood Sub. Bye-bye. Hooray for now. Hope that satisfies the little bastards.